Peace and love, you fantastic, wonderful miracles of a spiritual level of being. Nathan here from a spiritual level of being, and you have a spiritual level of being. Just want to say thank you so much for the continued support. View all my videos, subscribing, liking, commenting. This means a lot. I'm so happy that this community has grown. So we've made 461 videos starting now on this channel. So something special. I wanted to explain Egyptian symbols. Now, their meanings. Now, I want to begin with the anchor. Now, the anchor meaning life, the key of life. Also the key of the Nile, which was seen as the union of Osiris and Isis, which would flood the Nile and bring life to Egypt. Now, it also represents the masculine and femmes union and the sexual union. It also represents the divine femme. And in Gnosticism, especially the divine femme, this symbol also represented to them Sophia. Now, also the heavenly goddess. This symbol was used in order to give the Egyptians divine protection in their amulets. Now the scarab beetle, which was used in Egyptian amulets as well. Now this was used by both the living and the dead. Now it was worn for hundreds and thousands of years. It was worn by ancient Egyptians and other cultures, including even Gnostics. Now the dung beetle, which would push a giant ball and it would lay its eggs in this ball. When the Egyptians seen this and the hatchlings would then eat the dung as it was food provided for them, the Egyptians associated this process with the divine manifestation of the early morning sun, which Kepri, the scarab-faced god, would was believed to have rolled the disc of the morning sun over the eastern horizon at the daybreak. So... This is why his name was engraved into these amulets. Now, this symbol also to the Gnostics represented Sophia and the father. So implanting souls into the earth, basically. So parts of itself, experiencing itself. So this is a beautiful, beautiful symbol. Next up is the heart, which is Leb in Egyptian which the Egyptians believed that the heart was the center of consciousness, of all consciousness. It was even the center of life itself. Now, when someone died, the Egyptians would say, the heart has departed. I almost forgot. Now, this being said, this is the reason why during mummification process, the heart was not removed, as they believed that the god Mart would weigh the heart in order to see if the individual was worthy for the afterlife. Now, the Jews who believed the heart and mind was connected, meaning Lavav in Jewish language, meaning heart and mind. Now, this might have been adopted from the Egyptians' belief of the heart, mixed in with the Druid belief of the soul being in the head, as Druids were loved in Egypt as the Celtic mercenaries or Gaelic speaking mercenaries were hired and invited to stay over in Egypt and even to mix in with the Egyptians. So some viewed Gnosticism or Christianity as successor to the Egyptian and Druid faith. Now the Eye of Horus. The Egyptians believed that Horus had a battle with his uncle Set and during this battle he lost his left eye, which broke into six pieces that the God of Wisdom Thoth put back together. This eye then became known as Wajat, which means whole or healthy. This symbol also represents the mind eye, the pineal gland, parts of the mind. Now, it's also a mathematical symbol as the eyebrow represents one eighth, the eyeball represents one fourth, and this part of the eye represents one half, Whoops, <laughs> plus. This part of the eye represents one sixteenth. The bottom part in the symbol represents one sixty fourth. And the square looking thing represents one thirty two. Now, this symbol was used on amulets by both the living and the dead, it's providing magical protection, healing. Now, this story of the eye being reformed could also mean eye opening, awakening, rebirth. So next up is the lotus flower, 
in Egyptian as sesame. Now, this was seen as a holy flower that was grown all over Egypt. It represented rebirth, resurrection, regeneration, and represented the sun's rising and descent as lotus flowers retract into the water at night and then they emerge the next day. So this was seen as the sun rising. Now in the Book of the Dead, there's a magical charm that t transforms the dead into lotus flowers as allowing their resurrections. This symbol also meaning resurrection. Now this plant was also grinded up and used as an aphrodisiac. So it was a symbol of lovers making love. Now the Jed, which is basically a column with four parallel lines through it. This symbol also was associated with the god Osiris's backbone or the god's backbone. Now, the Egyptians believed that the Jed pillar was a combination of four pillars that held the four corners of the earth. This symbol was also associated with the god Osiris's rebirth or return from death, the resurrection. Now, this symbol was also painted on sarcophagi as it was a way of helping the dead pass on to the afterlife. It also represented stability, fertility and resurrection. Now the Jew, which has a D in front of it, sounds like Jew, but it's not. Now, this represents mountains, basically. It shows its peaks with a valley running in between it. So... The Egyptians basically held a belief that mountains were a cosmic force or a, another plane, basically, believing that the heavens were held by a cosmic mountain with two peaks with the Nile River in the middle of it. So like a heaven here on Earth, a parallel universe, a divine realm, basically. So these are just some simple stuff or throw in and explain. So I hope you enjoyed this. Peace and love, everyone. I love you all. Connect to one minus soul. Thank you for supporting. Namaste.